Today's recipe calls for corn. I'm going to show you how to make the best side dish to any meal. This is also known as fried corn. We're going to do two different versions of this. A super basic fried corn recipe, which I grew up eating and it was always super delicious. Then we're going to do a more elevated version, which has a few extra goodies in it. And some of these vegetables are locally sourced from my friend Dave's garden. So thanks Dave. And with that said, let's get started. The very first thing we're going to do is get a large pot of water on a burner and we're going to bring this up to a boil over high heat. You're going to leave about three to four inches from the top. You don't want to fill your pot completely full with water because we're going to add the corn to this pot. Then you're going to season your water with some coarse ground kosher salt like we would if we were making pasta. Once we add the corn, of course, the water is going to raise and if it's too high, then we'll overflow our pan. Then we're going to throw a lid right on top. This will help speed up the process, trapping all the steam inside making it come to a boil a lot faster. If you don't have a lid for your pot, you can also use tin foil. It'll work just as well. Now would be the perfect opportunity to peel all 12 ears of corn. Now that our water has come to a boil, we're gonna start dropping all of our ears of corn. It's best to use tongs for this. This way you don't have your hands near that scolding hot water. You're gonna gently place six ears of corn. We're gonna do this in batches, six now, and then the other six after these have boiled. And I'm using sweet corn for this. You can use any type of corn. Sweet corn is the best for something like this because when we go to fry it, all the natural sugars that are in the corn will caramelize and make our fried corn even more delicious. Then you're going to throw your lid right back on top of your pot to trap the steam to help boil our corn. This will help ensure that the tops get cooked since we can't fully submerge our corn. After your water has come back to a boil, then you'll set a timer for 10 minutes. We're going to boil our corn for 10 minutes. Once the timer has gone off, we're going to grab our tongs and pull the ears of corn out then drop the next six and repeat the same process for another 10 minutes. Now that we've boiled all 12 ears of corn and it's had time to cool down and it's not too hot to touch and work with, you're going to grab a chef's knife and you're going to start to cut the corn kernels off of the cob. You're going to grab your chef's knife and get your blade in between the corn kernels and the cob itself and just easily glide your knife through the corn, cutting the corn kernels off. You can use the bowl method like we did in our corn popper video, but once you boil corn, it tends to stick together. Not sure why and what the science is behind it, so it doesn't make as big of a mess as if it were raw corn kernels. You're going to repeat this process for all 12 ears of corn. You want to periodically clean off your workstation just so that it's a whole lot easier to cut the next corn cob. When you go to cut the corn kernels off, you want to look straight down your ears of corn, like a bird's eye view. This way you know where your blade is going and you can see where your little thingies are so you don't accidentally nick one of those little puppies. You should easily be able to cut through this since your corn has been cooked. If it gets to be too tough, then you know your blade has started to work into the cob. So if it starts to get too hard, just pull your knife out and start again. You can save your corn cob and make a corn stock for like soups or sauces or even a corn broth. If you've made the corn poppers and saved the corn cobs from that video, then you can save these ones and make a large pot of corn stock. I definitely recommend boiling the corn like we did. This will help speed up the cooking process in the end since we par cooked the corn. This way it'll fry a lot faster in the end and start to caramelize a lot quicker instead of trying to caramelize raw corn, which potentially could burn and start to make popcorn. And we don't want to do either of those things. And also, I'm not going to lie, I snacked on quite a bit of this corn as I was cutting it off the cob because it's so delicious, just like this. Maybe add a little pinch of salt and you got a great snack on your hands. Now that we have all of our corn kernels cut off the cobs, we're going to grab a large saute pan and throw it over medium heat. And to our pan, we're going to add one tablespoon of butter. This will be for our basic corn recipe. And you want to use the largest pan that has the most surface area so we can add a large amount of corn. And what the heck, we're going to add another tablespoon of butter. So to your pan, you should have two tablespoons of butter. We're going to completely melt those and get our pan ripping hot so we can start the caramelization part of our corn. Now that your butter has fully melted and your pan is ripping hot, we're going to start adding all of our corn kernels to our pan. There's really no set amount on this. I just divided the 12 ears of corn in half for each recipe. So it came out to about, give or take, two, two and a half cups. 
Typically, when you're cooking in the kitchen, you don't want to overcrowd your pan, but with something like this, it's inevitable to overcrowd your pan just because corn kernels are so small, and there's a ton of corn kernels here. So again, you want to use the largest pot you have that has the widest surface amount so that you can get a nice even layer of corn on the bottom so we get a nice even cook. This would be the perfect opportunity to pull out any of the extra silk from our corn or any husks that were stuck to the corn that you weren't able to get out earlier. Then we're gonna generously season our corn kernels with some coarse ground kosher salt and a few twisties of some fresh ground black pepper. Once you have all of your corn seasoned, you're gonna give it a nice mix up to coat all of our corn kernels in our melted butter and spread out our seasonings as well. Now that we have everything in our pan, we're gonna cook our corn kernels for about eight to nine minutes or until we get a nice golden brown color on our corn kernels. Of course, you're not gonna be able to caramelize all of your corn kernels, it's just not possible. So some corn kernels are gonna be a light golden brown color and then some are gonna be a nice deep rich golden brown color and some might be a little dark in color which is totally fine you want to periodically stir your corn kernels this way you can stir the corn kernels on the top to the bottom this way that they're able to be caramelized like the rest the longer you cook your corn the more caramelization that you're gonna get giving you more of a deeper richer flavor and a more delicious flavor also you can throw your lid on as well to help cook the corn and keep all the steam in this doesn't take long, so you don't have to cook this stuff to death because it's already par cooked and we're just finishing it in our pan when we fry it. And we're gonna add another tablespoon of butter because I heard a tablespoon of butter a day keeps the doctor away. Or that might be apples, I'm not sure. I'm still confused about it. Then we'll stir in that extra pat of butter till it's completely melted. The more butter you add, the more fat it adds to our corn, which is more flavor. So you can totally skip this last tablespoon of butter, but if I were you, I would just add it. It makes it even more delicious. Then we're gonna give it the old taste of roux and adjust the seasoning as needed. I added a few more pinches of kosher salt and a few more twisties of fresh ground black pepper. Once you've adjusted the seasonings as needed, you're gonna give it the mix up to incorporate all the seasonings into our corn kernels. And there you go, that's our basic fried corn recipe. There's not a whole lot to it and it comes out really great. Next, we're gonna move on to our more elevated fried corn recipe. Next, we're gonna start on the elevated corn recipe. This time, we're gonna use some cooking oil. We're gonna use the same exact pan. You're gonna throw down enough oil to coat the bottom of your pan over medium heat as well. The only downside with the oil is you don't get that nice caramelization like you do with butter. So if you don't wanna use oil, you can easily use another two tablespoons of butter if you choose. Now that your oil is ripping hot, we're gonna add one half of a medium sized red onion that has been small diced. You wanna small dice all of your vegetables for this recipe. This way it blends in really well and easily with our corn kernels. And if you wanna be a little extra and bougie, you can use shallots instead of using red onion if you choose. And we're gonna lightly season our onions with some kosher salt then give that the stir up so that we coat all of our onions in our oil and mix up that salt into our onions as well. You're gonna cook these until they're nice and translucent in color. Should take about three to four minutes over medium heat. Now that your onion has been sauteed and is nice and translucent, we're gonna add three medium-sized Anaheim chilies that have been small diced and also have been de-seeded and de-stemmed. We're gonna cook these until they're nice and tender or pale in color. Should take about two to three minutes. Then we're gonna add a small pinch of kosher salt as you should anytime you add a new thing to your pan. Anaheim chilies are not too spicy, so if you want more of a spicy flavor, you can use a different kind of chili if you choose. Then we're gonna use some TV magic, give it a quick stir, and boom, we have corn in our pan with a lid on top. And you're gonna repeat the same process like we did before and just caramelize all of your corn. Once there's a nice caramelization on your corn, we're gonna add six medium-sized garlic cloves that have been minced. We're gonna add this to our pan and cook it for about one to two minutes until our garlic becomes nice and fragrant in smell. Once your garlic clove has become nice and fragrant in smell, then you know our elevated corn is done. So give it the old taste to roux and adjust the seasonings with some kosher salt and a few twisties of fresh ground black pepper. Before we've plate up our elevated fried corn, we're gonna work on some of the extra goodies that we're gonna throw on top to make it even more elevated and bougie. You're gonna grab a medium sized lime and you're gonna cut it in half and then cut those halves into fours to make 
four little wedges of limes. The limes will definitely bring a lot to the party and brighten up the dish. Definitely recommend them. Then we're going to grab a medium sized avocado and cut it on the horizontal and give the old twisty to twist apart the avocado leaving the pit on one side. Then you're going to grab your paring knife and going to cut from the top down. You're going to cut small slices of avocado that are about one eighth to a quarter inch thick. And once you have that cut from the top down you're going to cut side to side using the same exact method cutting them to about one eighth or a quarter inch thick. This way we get small little cubes of avocado. Ensure that you don't press too hard with your knife because the knife will pierce through the skin and you could potentially stab yourself. Once you have everything cut, give it a little twist to break up the avocado, making it easier to get out later. Then grab your favorite serving plate and start to plate up your elevated fried corn. There's no magical way to do this, but I think the best method is to spoon it right in the middle. And you want to stack it high right on top of each other just so we get that nice high elevation which will give us a nice aesthetic look. Then grab a spoon and your avocado and start to spoon out your avocado to throw right on top of your fried corn. Then it tends to stick together so you're gonna have to break it apart so that you get the small little cubes of avocado. And there's no set amount of how much avocado you add. Avocado is super delicious and rich and fatty and just banging. So yeah, you should definitely add a lot. Don't be too shy with it. And I also noticed that we should have added something red to give it a nice pop of color. It would have definitely added a nice contrast to it. So maybe add some cayenne pepper, a little sprinkle on top, or your favorite hot sauce or some sriracha would also be good. And we're going to garnish with some dried parsley just for that nice look. And boom, there you go. There's your elevated fried corn. You're welcome. All right, now that our fried corns are done, let's give them a shot. First, we're gonna start off with the basic corn first. And uh, I made the adult decision, and we're just gonna eat it out of some Tupperware and eat it with a serving spoon because I'm lazy and don't wanna clean another dish. That's the only perk about being a grown-up. You can make terribly great decisions like this. So aesthetically, it looks good. It's nice and bright yellow still, and there's multicolors from it being fried. It looks great, let's give it a shot. This stuff came out really great. It's sweet and it's salty. The sweetness comes from the sweet corn itself. And then when you fry it and cook it down so much, it brings even more sweetness to the table. And counterbalance the sweetness is all that salt that we added, which isn't that much, but it's a nice balance between the two. And then it's nice and rich and fat from all that butter, which is always delicious, of course. And then it has an even deeper roasted flavor from cooking it down. The only downside is it sticks to your teeth, but it's still delicious and brings me back to the good old days. Now let's try our other elevated fried corn. It's nice and aesthetically pleasing. Didn't fry down as much as we did with the other one, so we didn't get as many colors, but the little avocados on top look really good. Let's give it a shot. This one also came out really great. It's nice and sweet as well, but then you get that nice robust garlic and onion flavor. Then the pepper is nice and faint in there. Then the avocado adds some richness and creamy and fat flavor to it. Overall, it's really good. Let's try it with the lime next. A squeezed lime helps round out this entire dish. The acid helps cut through the sweetness of the corn and helps cut through that rich, fat, creamy avocado as well helps balance out the whole dish, really brightens it up. And I wish it had just a little bit more heat, which is easy to fix. You can add more, use a different pepper in the end. Overall, these both came out really delicious. I can't really decide which one my favorite one is. You should definitely make both though. All right, that's it for today's video. These recipes are really easy, and you can pretty much throw anything you want in there. Maybe some crispy bacon, or some pickled red onions, or pickled jalapenos. This goes pretty much well with anything. Maybe some grilled salmon, or even barbecue, which would be really delicious. And if you've never had fried corn, definitely give the basic one a try. You're in for a real treat. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm on the hunt for some uh, <laughs> crop circles now, but I should probably find somebody that has a plane. That would make a whole lot easier. So we'll see you on the next one. Feels weird grabbing with my left hand. And today's weather, if you look, it's, it's a sunny day out today. And the forecast is great. Yeah. I'm gonna squeam, squeeze, squeam. So tired of eating corn. I'm not gonna eat corn for a while after this video.
from today's forecast, it looks awfully sunny today. Well, I don't know what's with the accent. I'm afraid to smile because I feel like there's corn in my teeth. You know? <laughs>